welcome back. Like I mentioned last week, we have a very special guest today. So this is Sandy. She is my tattoo artist. Hey guys. So today we are going to be giving her a pride makeover in exchange for a pride tattoo. Yep. Stay tuned. I'm down for that. We'll, we'll figure that out. But I'm super excited. Like I said, every video this month we'll have a giveaway associated so this video as you can tell we are wearing disruptive ink shirts so for this giveaway you will be entered into a drawing for a 50 dollars cash app as well as a pride disruptive ink shirt so definitely make sure that you subscribe to this channel like this video and leave your cash app below once you follow my instagram as well all right let's get started Okay, so today we're doing a rainbow cut crease look, of course, using my James Charles palette. So we're gonna get into it. I will do my best to explain as I go. I've never done anyone else's makeup before, so this will be interesting. Um, I hope you don't have very high expectations. <laughs> but um, as we go, yeah, <laughs> as we go, we're just going to kind of talk through. I kind of want you guys to get to know Sandy a little bit more. I will leave her channel here as well so you guys can check her channel out. She's going to be um, starting to post more of her tattoos and things like that and her Facebook. So all of her information will be in the video as well as in the description box below. Okay, so to get started, we're going to prime with the Urban Decay Shadow Potion Primer. I'm just going to blend that out with a flat brush. So I'm really excited to have you on my channels. Sandy's our very first guest, guys. Oh my gosh. I should make a plaque or something. Oh yeah, I need one for sure. Something honorary. So I'm going to set the primer with the shade canvas, which is just this nude color. Ever gotten your makeup done like professionally or just like by somebody else um like when i went to prom you know so in like 1976 <laughs> <laughs> <Touché>. <laughs> <laughs> and it was terrible i'm not gonna lie they did my face like super white and then like bright red lips and really dark eyes oh we love that i don't think they did it very well just like so just washed out I think it's hard just in general like if you can't if you're not like a celebrity you don't know what a good makeup artist is uh -huh. like, like I don't really know how I would go out and pick a makeup artist I would just probably look at their Instagram and hope that like nobody looks like trash <laughs> true I also when I went to prom I didn't even I wasn't very girly in high school mm. so you know like I was very athletic played sports didn't even I didn't have like, you know, anything until I graduated, so I didn't know how to be girly. Yeah. I feel like it's hard, especially at that bit. age. Like I don't think it was very popular back at that mm. point either. To have like a full face of makeup. Oh, very true. So I'm going in with the shade You're Kidding, which is this red shade here. So I'm just gonna start by packing this in the inner corner. So we're basically just doing a rainbow cut crease. So I'm gonna start with the red and blend it all the way out to the purple. So I'm super excited. It's very uh, different filming with a guest, I've realized. <laughs> I've never had to think so much about what I wanted to say because I just ramble most of the time and hope that it comes out right. I'm dipping into the shade 518 now. This is the orange shade here. I'm just packing this right next to the red. So since you've been doing tattoos, how long have you been tattooing for? Um, almost five years. Five years. But then, like more seriously within like the last three. And then did you go to like a school for it or how does that work? Like how did you get into tattooing? So really they have schools but they're not really taken seriously. So um, you have to do an apprenticeship. Okay. So I actually did two. Oh, um, okay. I'm, I'm dipping into B now. This is this yellow shade. Um, I started with my uncle and after doing that for almost a year I then went on to do an apprenticeship with a local tattoo shop here in Colorado. And then after that, I just kind of jumped in and started doing my own. Still then. Mm-hmm. And you've been on your own for how long? 
Um, a year and a half. Yeah. Do you have like a specific, like I'm not super familiar with it, like do you have a specific style of tattoo you do or like what's your favorite style of tattoo you do? You know, when I first started, I thought it would be like a very sketchy, very colorful style, but I actually really like a super fine detail, floral, very like feminine lines. Oh, floral. Hmm, you don't say. It's a very nice tattoo you have there. <laughs> Sandy's done my entire <laughs> sleeve so far, so. So you said you like doing more floral stuff, more like detail work. Mm -hmm. but probably, I think as an artist, that's probably something that like you would be able to show your artistry more doing yes. that. Yeah, for I sure. get that. Dipping into the shade Social Blade. So do you see yourself like, I know right now you're just kind of in the midst of COVID, just renting out a space, mm -hmm. but where eventually like do you see yourself with your shop? Like what's your long term? So, um, my girlfriend and I co-own the shop, and we really want to open a bigger spot, get a lot more artists in there, and we want to present a completely different like vibe. I think tattoo shops get like a masculine, yeah, <laughs> they're very masculine, kind of yeah. like a vibe to them, and yes. and I want to have a different, like a totally different feeling, you know? Yeah. Um, we also both come from like customer service backgrounds, mm -hmm. so we're nice. <laughs> um, I think it's very different than what you usually get. Yeah, I, t I definitely agree. I think it's, you definitely like, it, tattoo shops can be very intimidating. Mm -hmm. I feel like, and that's something I've always really liked is that it's just always been super like welcoming and not like when you walk in, there's like metal music, like blaring and like some guy with 20 piercings on his nose comes out and so is like, true. what's up? What can I get you? And I'm just like, oh my God. So true. It's like, so this, true. this is not for me. <laughs> So you guys are looking for like a permanent spot right now. Mm -hmm. And then currently you're in Brighton. I am, I am. It's a, it's a nice little spot. It's, you know, it's temporary, but. Quaint. It is quaint. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you don't need a lot of space to tattoo. Agreed. It's not too bad. You need to be able to fit a body. Basically. And that's it. Yeah. So the mm -hmm. trunk of a car is just fine. <laughs> I'm dipping into the shade Playground and this is just to blend the purple and the green together. So what made you like want to get started in tattooing? Like I know you said obviously like from your uncle, but like I know you were an artist before, so like what made you take the leap to tattooing rather than just like art and producing that kind of thing? So I like my family's always told me that I should do it. Um, my uncle has done it for a long time. And so we was it was always something we were around. And then like my brother and my dad just kept saying, this is something you should do, you should do. And finally my uncle convinced me to try it. And I remember the first time I literally put a needle to skin and I was like, yep, hooked, this is it. It was and like I'm one of dead. those stories. Yes, I was like, I wanna do it, I'm ready. <laughs> and that was, you said like five years ago then? Yeah, or? it was almost five years ago, yeah. Wow. Have you ever thought of doing like apprenticeships or like anything like that where you would like travel? I know some people do like residencies in different shops. Oh yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Especially to do it in like different countries or different states and stuff. Wow, I know. Oh, she's an artist. Me, oh, not her. Yeah, me. I taught her everything. She did. I did this. <laughs> she's just here for show. Okay, we're back. I forgot to do her eyebrows. So, did that. You didn't see anything. We're all good. <laughs> so, I finished the eye look. So, what I'm going to do now to cut the crease is use my Tarte Shape Tape. This is in the shade Fair Beige. For those of us who don't know, obviously not myself, but uh, what do you mean by cut the crease? <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, a cut crease is like you have the crease of your eye where uh -huh. you're like the fold basically is. Right. So, you are cutting that with concealer. So, you're basically taking concealer from that point down. Got it. And it's going to be like a blank canvas underneath. I asked for those who didn't know. This is an educational channel. Yeah. So, obviously, we're doing a pride look. And you had mentioned earlier, just kind of like talking about your coming out story. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, could we talk, like, could we kind of go over that on my channel? Would you be sure. Sure. Okay, so tell your story. How how did that go or what what happened? What transpired? Um, 
I wish it was like more fabulous then. You know, I've, I've heard some coming out stories and they're just like amazing. Um, and then the rockets took off right. and a rainbow <laughs> flag parade. erupted. Yeah, I wish it was more like that. But um, I do think that like there's so many different ways for people to come out and um, most of the time there's a lot of anxiety and pressure before you come out. Mm. Um, I grew up not knowing what gay was. Like I didn't have any gay friends. There was not no like, exposure. A, yeah, there wasn't like a lot of gay people on TV. So it just wasn't, you know, so I really did grow up thinking thinking all girls liked other girls, but they were just supposed to date boys. Like I just thought that just was just like for show. <laughs> yeah, it's like so I'm sure you all are thinking about women but you have to date boys. So I did, so I just dated guys. Until We're I We're all in the same Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, this is so weird. Um, and then I like actually became an adult and started meeting like other lesbians and realizing like, oh, okay, this is a thing. And I remember the first time I, I was like 20, no, 21. And um, I had met like a couple of lesbians at Strava was at. And they told me about this gay bar. So they took me down there. And I don't know, like if you're from Denver and you're a little bit older, you might remember C's or Miss C's. It's I can't relate. It, you know, it's it's different. It was different. Um Yeah. So I remember going down there and I was young, like I said, I was like twenty one. So I go down to Miss C's and walk in and I immediately was like a piece of meat to all of these like much older, very butch lesbians. So my first experience as lesbian was kind of terrifying. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like that could be really intimidating. It's it like was, a whole yeah. new world plus like yeah. not only that, but you're like already uncomfortable because you're like not familiar, but then it's like on top of it. Like yeah, to, yeah I can only imagine. And I like, there's so many different like versions of, of gay, like lisp lipstick lesbian, butch, soft butch, all that. Yeah, there's um, a lot of different categories. Yeah. I am de I'm definitely like the feminine one. And so going in there, I was just like, is this what lesbians are? Like, I was just so confused. Like, I was very naive. <laughs> I'm just so, I don't even know how I survived, guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> so crazy. Like, I don't want to wear cargo shorts. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I just can't do this. Um, but then, you know, that was like my introduction to the world and, um, starting to meet other lesbians, more lesbians that were my, like my type, like my personality. So like at this point, your family didn't know because you no. just kind of assumed this was like the norm. Yeah. So they didn't know. Um, I had already been in a couple of serious relationships with men and so yeah, they had no idea. And then, um, I went to JR's and I had met. And Jarrah's um, was another, like, club? It was, yeah. It was one that, like, a lot of different people went to. Like, you didn't, you weren't just gay. Like, there was oh, a lot right. of straight people. It was very, like, a young, hip scene. Um, and I had met the person that I had spent the next 11 years with. Wow. <laughs> there, yeah. <laughs> so when you're committing, you're committing. Yeah. <laughs> so the camera gave up on us and stopped recording. I yeah. don't know where. So, <laughs> but we're back. We're fighting through the technical difficulties. Oh man. Okay. So I just need to clean up a little bit with the concealer. So as we were talking about that you guys did not see, mm -hmm. it was really good. Um, <laughs> it was super, super good. <laughs> it's gonna be even better the second time yeah. around. So you were saying though that it helped you kind of like to have resources and places to go and people to surround yourself with that were like also gay or just at least like allies in a sense, right? Yes, yeah, and I think that's so important. That's why Pride Month is so important. You know, um, there's so Shout many... out to Marsha P. Johnson. This little Word. quick shout out there. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many young kids that don't know how to come out or don't have that safety yeah. to come out. Like I was very, I was very lucky with my family, um, you know, I think all families kind of come around to it in their own time. Like some people you can say, hey mom, I'm gay and bam, she's totally fine with it. 
Yeah, others, I think there yeah. are some times where you can see that it's like, a, oh yeah, we knew. Yeah. Like, we were just kind of waiting for you to be ready. Yeah. Other times it's, you know, they need a little bit of time to process and figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then some families just aren't accepting ever. Yeah. So finding that like community outside of your family is very important. I, I really like the quote of like, you get to choose your family. So mm -hmm. like, even if your like biological family is not accepting, you can sure. choose your family of who you surround yourself with and the people that you're always going to be around as your family because that's the support that you need. So I think like that, I really like that because sometimes you do need that. Yeah. Even if it's not because like of coming out or things like that, like if it is something just in general, like something that maybe your family doesn't accept about you, mm -hmm. then finding that like community within you know your friend group or whatever like that can be literally life-saving at times yeah, totally agree and it's definitely a different world now you know like there is social media there's you see you see the gay culture and lesbian culture and trans community all of that you see all of that on tv now and it's a lot more accepted there's still so many dangers and so much ignorance out there yeah. but there's a lot more resources i think especially for young people yeah i agree i think it's been a little bit more like broadcasted to be like hey this is a normal mm -hmm. thing this is like not just your child right. is experiencing this like look at how many millions of people also experience mm -hmm. this yeah i agree so now you have all these questions for me <laughs> but <laughs> um i mean obviously you're an ally very much so yes is there like a reason you're an ally or well, I mean, yes, like my, so I haven't really talked about my family at all yet. It's very early, so I usually, you know, wait till like the seventh date for that. But um, yeah, so I have two, I have three sisters all together, two of which are gay, and my um, brother, who's not biological, but still a brother, he's also gay. So I've been really, like, pretty much my entire life, I have been around, like, basically gay culture or you know like I've it's been normalized to me since I was very very young so it's not something that was like shocking to me or crazy to me like it is for some people um I think that's very like I'm very lucky in that aspect that it wasn't like a oh my god like what does that mean or what like a lot of people don't even know like as a kid you know like they don't even know what a gay person is or what that uh -huh. means and it's just like a really uncomfortable conversation for some people to have like especially with kids uh -huh. so I'm very fortunate in that aspect and I mean I just think like in general like I have a lot of people in my life that are gay or that you know are um, allies as well so I think it helps a lot to kind of surround yourself with those people as well like I would never want to be around people that were homophobic or like hateful towards gay people because I would never like that's the same thing as like associating with like racist people absolutely mm. not we don't do that here it's canceled yeah 2020 get over it so I'm gonna go back in with some of the similar colors just to blend this out a little bit more so it's not super harsh so I'll use like some pink some purple things like that to kind of blend everything What's your usual makeup routine? Like, go through like your typical steps. I know it's not like super intense, but it's not like you do wear something. Yeah. So I mean, I'm unless I'm going out, um, I like to kind of keep it, you know, very kind of like casual. Kind of fun, like, kind wear, of fresh. Yeah. Like I wear a foundation and you know, like blush. Um, always mascara. I will always have mascara on no matter what. Um, even if I'm just like hanging out for the day. Um, weekends, I really just do like powder. Uh, so on the weekends, I try not to wear anything at all. Yeah, I just kind of keep it very like you know casual. But yeah, I if I don't have mascara on, then I feel very naked. Mascara and my earrings, I have to have both on every day. Mm. So we love a good little meet cute. How did you meet your current girlfriend? Tell us that story. So my best friend is actually married to her sister um and we'd work together and she just kept inviting me to come out she's like come out can meet her so finally i did um and i actually met her at first friday so if you're not from denver 
first Friday is basically um, at a club called Trap. Trap is a gay club, right? Yeah. Um, most of the time. <laughs> so, um, it's like the first Friday of every month is like a huge thing at Tracks. So that's what she's referring to if you're not from Denver. So, um, I get there and I arrive fashionably late. So she's already a little tipsy. Um, <laughs> very she's tipsy. Having she's fun. fun. She's having fun. Um, <laughs> and she's like ordering shots and like literally guys she's taking shots slamming the glass shots on the table and like throwing them across the table against the wall like she's viking okay am i like no nope, wait nope okay. like she's a viking okay just throwing <laughs> this was my first impression of her um and i loved it and like, that's gosh, when she amazing. knew <laughs> <laughs> and i remember like we had all gone to the restroom and my best friend at this point, she was just like, okay, I'm not going to leave you alone with her. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, she's totally fine. I'm just going to get a drink. We're going to get a drink. So we walk over to get a drink. Uh, we didn't even make it to the to that bar. Uh, she, like, grabbed my hand and, like, walked me around, like, the club, whatever. Um, also, my girlfriend like a, cannot dance. Like a tour? Or she, you know, I'm not, I think she was dancing. <laughs> it's, we're not entirely, it's debatable. Uh, there was movement, but, um, so we finally make it to the bar and then she's cut off by her family. <laughs> um, and just immediately, like, I don't know, we just kind of clicked and we started talking the next day and the rest is history. The rest is history, yeah. Like she's just literally perfect. Aww. Me, at least. <laughs> Also, guys, I just want to make a little announcement that I am now at 50 subscribers. What? So, hold the applause, everybody. I know Congrats. we're excited. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to let you know. Latest updates. This just in. We're killing it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do eyeliner. We're going to hold our breath for this part because I can barely do it on myself, let alone someone else. So, I'm ready. Okay, so I semi-survived the eyeliner. We're thriving. <laughs> I'm gonna use the Lily Lashes in the Style Goddess. Okay, so my camera died. Here we are. So I'm just gonna do her under eye and then we're gonna finish off with some mascara. Okay, I did just go off just now. <laughs> I want you guys to take a minute to appreciate me. Remember this moment. You're an artist, really. This will never happen again. I can guarantee it. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other eye and then we'll be back in another four hours. <laughs> okay, so I just did the NARS, uh, it's the Orgasm Blush. And then a little bit of the Crown Cosmetics Bronzer, just on the light shade. Then I'm just gonna take my Morphe blending brush and I'm gonna grab a little bit more ring light and highlight as well. Okay. So for a lip, I just wanna do something nude, obviously since the look has so much going on. So I'm gonna do a combination. This is the NYX, the nude lip liner. Okay, and then I'm gonna use the NYX matte lipstick. This is in the shade Strawberry Daiquiri. Finish off with the You Fancy lip gloss from Live Glam. Okay, guys, so that is the look all completed. I am actually really happy with how it came out. I was a me little, too. I was a little scared to be honest. So <laughs> thank you for having some faith in me because I was I not, did. not super confident, but. Yeah, so this is going to be, um, like I said, kind of a, a little tradesy. So it's going to be a pride makeover for a pride tattoo. So yes. definitely follow Sandy. Where can they find you on social media? Um, so it's Disruptive Ink Tattoos on Facebook and Instagram. 
beautiful and I will leave everything down below like I said make sure you follow her and then on her YouTube channel it's Sandra Lynn correct no it's it's disruptive it's just it's just yeah okay so I'll also leave that linked underneath as well and then we will post my tattoo my pride tattoo on her channel just kind of wanted to go over you guys are doing some pride shirts th yeah. correct through disruptive um, threads yes so we're doing some pride shirts it's gonna have some designs um, you know, the first Pride was Riot, uh, Disruptive Ink, uh, a few other fun designs. Um, they're all gonna be screen print, which is awesome. So the some of the proceeds from the shirts will be donated to a couple of the centers around town. You know, we like to give back to the community and stuff. Yeah, okay, so I am super excited. Thank you so much for joining Thank me. You. My first guest on my fun. channel. I can't wait to look at this in a few years and laugh and see how awful it was and how much I've grown because I'm going to get better. Um, I look fabulous right now. I'm not going to lie. Fabulous. So next week will be a full face of a pride look with black owned beauty brands only. I will leave links below as always to the Black Lives Matter, um, anywhere you can donate basically, any resources. So definitely whether it's time, whether it's just the education, whether it is money, Definitely donate where you can, but I will see you guys next week for the next look. Bye. Bye.